on this amendment. Thanks, John Corla. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously the Oireachtas Committee recommended that the legislation should incorporate the principle of climate justice. The Minister has accepted that in a part of the legislation in her own amendment number uh, 17, and we think it is absolutely critical that it, this is inserted uh, so that ministers have to have regard uh, to this principle when designing mitigation plans. Now, you know, climate justice, let's put it on the record and just to quote uh, Naomi Klein on it, really what it means is that all developing uh, countries are owed a debt for the inherent injustice of climate change. The fact that wealthy countries had used up most of the atmospheric uh, capa um, capacity for safely absorbing carbon dioxide before the developing countries had a chance to industrialise. And that really it's unfair to expect developing countries whose people have contributed so little to uh, cl the climate crisis to shoulder the economic burden of climate change mitigation. But I mean, if we're saying that and we're putting that principle into the bill, then we have to mean it and the plan actually has to support policies which will deliver that principle and that's why where we have a bit of a, a problem here because i mean let's step back and look at this the countries that have been powering their economies with fossil fuels since the industrial revolution have done far uh, more to cause temperatures to rise than those which have just arrived if you like on, on the globalization uh, stage in the last couple of decades. So it's not a level playing field. Developed countries which represent less than 20% of the world's population have emitted almost 70% of all greenhouse uh, gas pollution, which is destabilizing the climate. So where do we fit in ours? Well, Ireland is the second worst polluter per capita in Europe after Poland. So we owe a debt and we in Ireland owe a debt uh, to the developing countries. And, you know, I'm glad that the minister is sharing that view to the extent of saying, yes, we should build that in as a principle of our climate change bill. But if nothing else in the bill is actually moving us nearer to that objective, well then it's just meaningless and it's actually uh, a bit of a, an insult. We look at how do we make that aspiration or that principle a reality in uh, living terms. You know, how, how will we repay this debt which has now been acknowledged? How do we promote the principle of climate justice? And that's really what, what we need to look at because, you know, fighting the extractionism of the fossil fuel industry is a way to do it, but we're not doing it. Fighting the new free trade deals such as the TTP and the TTIP, which effectively are corporate wish lists that will have a devastating impact on the environment, in particular in countries in the developing world, reining in our overconsumption, which doesn't mean uh, you know, targeting everybody who drives a car, but actually means promoting localisation of our economies, promoting real serious policies in terms of delivering uh, public transport and massive uh, rail transport as well, but not the sort of metro light ladybird version that the government announces in fanfares a hundred times over, but a real development of rail and public transport beyond anything that we've seen uh, already. And we do need to look at that. And I don't think that's been built in as part of that. And to just quote the, the last point, Kian Corla, in terms of Naomi Klein herself, who I think has rephrased uh, and remoulded the discussion around climate change, which is often put outside the reach of ordinary people. It's often packaged in terms of blaming the individual behaviour of individuals rather than looking at how society itself is organised and what governments can do. But she makes the point, as a direct result of, of centuries of serial thefts, of land, labour and atmospheric space, developing countries today are squeezed between the impacts of global warming, made worse by persistent poverty, and by their need to alleviate that poverty, which in the current economic system can be done most cheaply and easily by burning a great deal more carbon, direct, dramatically worsening the climate crisis. So they cannot break the deadlock without help, and help can only come from those countries and corporations that grew wealthy in a large part as a result of the illegitimate appropriations. This argument doesn't rest on ethics and morality alone. Wealthy countries don't just need to help the global south move to a low emissions economic path because it's the right thing to do. We need to do it because our collective survival 
depends on it. So when we talk about climate justice, we need to do it in terms of the bigger picture. And that's why I would support um, initiatives like the LEAP manifesto put forward in relation to Canada, where they start looking at this situation in terms of, uh, as the document says, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission acknowledged shocking details of violence of Canada's near past. They talk about deepening poverty and inequality contributing and adding to the problems of climate change and then look at the solution to that in terms of what government can do in terms of uh, the bigger picture and giving communities control over their destinies, be it in terms of energy projects, be it in terms of of um, energy efficient programs, retrofitting housing, all of which can generate employment, but on a serious scale, proper public transport and so on. So while we believe that we should put in the principle in different parts of the Act, and that's a good thing, and we're glad that the Minister has put it in in part, it's not going to mean anything unless it's added up with meat and substance, and unfortunately, nothing in the bill does that. You know, when this is done, we're three, four years away from fines being implemented on us. The EU itself has said we haven't a snowball's chance in hell of reaching the targets that we've signed up to. So inevitably, the taxpayer is going to be squeezed for this because of the lack of action of the government on this now.